catch up on the recording. Fantastic. Um, so for those of you who I have not met before, um, my name is Kaylee Lott and I serve as the National Scholastic Development and Awards Chair. Um, we also have with us this evening Tyler Havens. Uh, he's the Director of Chapter Services. Um, he just turned on recording for us and he's also going to be monitoring the chat. So if you have questions or technical difficulties, Please feel free to ping them in the chat or you can come off of mute and, and ask directly. Um, it'll be a lot less boring if I'm not just talking at you for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, but before we dive into the content, I do just want to cover just a couple housekeeping items. Um, once the recording is completed for this evening, um, in a few days that will be available um, on Delta State University and DSP Learn and the Lead app. Um, and you may have noticed that we enabled a live transcript for this program. So if you find that to be a little distracting for you, you can turn it off yourself um, in the Zoom toolbar. Um, and then lastly, of course, feel free to screenshot any of these slides and again, unmute and ask questions or add your own commentary um, as you want throughout. Um, I'm sure some of you on the call, this is not the first time that you've been through the awards process. So certainly if there's lessons learned from your experience or, or things that you'd like to share that might be helpful with the group, I'm certainly happy for you to do that as well. Um, so the agenda for tonight's call is really to focus on um, the national chapter awards um, that we have coming up very soon um, and go through some of the resources and process for what that's going to look like. Um, and really tonight we're looking at the collegiate chapter submission process, but the, the same really applies for alumni chapters as well. So where do I find information? Um, as with most things fraternity related, you're going to start at dsp.org um, and very helpfully it's slash awards. Um, and this is going to give you a lot of information about the various awards that we have and kind of pull you right into, into the things that are going to make sense for you. Um, you can also, for as your collegiate members, if you visit the VPSA resource pages, that's also going to help you get to some of this information as well. The thing that I find that I spend most of my time in, and I would imagine that you're going to spend quite a bit of time here as well as you actually get into the awards themselves, um, is the awards and recognition guide. So when you're on that landing page, um, you're going to notice right over here um, on the left hand side is the link right into that document. Um, and this is really going to help give you all of the information about what the awards and recognitions are, how to apply, what the criteria are, deadlines, what you need to include, um, so that you really have the full picture um, for what that process and what those expectations are. I did say that we are focusing today on the chapter awards specifically, so things like Collegian of the Year, for example, happen in the fall. Um, these are the awards that we are going to be talking about this evening. You'll note that there are um, several awards here. They're, they're mirrored pretty well between collegiate and alumni chapters, although there are a few differences. Collegiate chapters, you also have um, the Outstanding Scholastic Development Award. I do want to note that the ones that we just saw on the previous slide are the ones that you're building the applications for, but we also do have some awards that are automatic. So these are gonna just pull information from other areas, um, namely CMP, um, and then that will decide whether you get an award without the need for you to submit an application. So we're looking at really things related to your CMP achievement levels, um, different things that you may have improved or achieved a highest increase percentage, what have you, in various metrics. Um, I think that these are a really great opportunity for you to get recognized as a chapter without having to do that additional piece of work but don't look at this as being an either or situation. These are a great opportunity, but you also really do wanna focus on uh, building the applications for the chapter awards that really do feel meaningful for your chapter and the work that you've been doing. In addition to that, we have two individual awards that we kind of include within that bucket of chapter awards. Um, the first one is chapter advisor of the year. 
Um, and the second is the district director of the year. So chapter advisor is really where you're looking to recognize your faculty or staff advisor at your school. And district director is a little different and that the nomination is coming from the regional vice president. But I will say here that most RVPs are really, really interested in having the input of the chapters for who deserves this award and why in the region. So even though your chapter's not going to be the ones that are submitting the award for district director of the year, I really do encourage you to reach out to your RVPs and talk to them about why your DD may be a great person to nominate for this award and help them understand why. So now how do we apply for these awards? So from within the hub, you're gonna kind of scroll down to the bottom of the left-hand side of the screen and you'll click on chapter awards. Um, you can't find them on the forms button. So I know as a collegiate chapter in particular, kind of you get into a habit of everything that you do in the hub, you go in, you click forms to submit the various activities. Make sure that you're scrolling down to chapter awards because this is not going to be found in forms. Within that, you'll find all of the um, application pieces. This is also where you will find chapter advisor of the year. So they are broken out into a couple of different sections. Um, so you should be able to pretty easily find them. Um, you'll click on the link to be able to open the application and start working on the award that you want to work on. And again, here you're seeing the ones that, that we looked at on the previous slide. One of the things that's going to be really important for you as you are completing these awards applications is that you want to look at the eligibility and qualification requirements. These are of course referenced in the awards and recognition guide, but here is really where you're going to see kind of the, the breakdown of what those items are. So we're thinking about things like making sure that your chapter hasn't been serving a, a disciplinary period this year that you're up to date on any debt that you owe to the fraternity, those types of items. This is the one area where I do want to make sure that we recognize that the deadline for award submissions does not align with CMP. We understand that. There are checkboxes on this page that may not be true when you submit the award, but they might become true. So for example, chapter has received accredited chapter level for the current academic year. Well, you can't have technically achieved that yet because the CMP year hasn't completed. So making sure that it is on track for these things to happen um, and, and don't, don't use this to say, oh, well, we can't apply for this award because we didn't meet these criteria. Keep that kind of gap in deadlines in mind and make sure that you're on, on track for that um, as you move forward. If you come in and you're thinking, oh no, we, we have debt to the fraternity, make sure you pay that and then, and then it will be met. These will continue to update even after submission. So again, because of that gap in deadlines, we recognize some of these things are going to become true. So keep in mind the trajectory you're on, making sure that it's something that is still possible to happen. We do look at these when we go through to evaluate winners. So this is something that will be kind of reconfirmed as we go through the actual review process. As we continue looking through the rest of the applications, you'll notice that a lot of this information is auto-populated and pulling in from the forms that you completed for the various events that you've had throughout the year. Um, some of the information can't be modified, so thinking about things like the date of the event, the number of attendees, um, things like that. But if you want to update, for example, the description to make it more detailed or more relevant, you are still able to do that. Um, it's nice to have a starting point for sure, so you're not sitting there being like, oh, now I have to click back to this other page and try to remember what it is that we did in September. At least it's there to give you a starting point, even though there is some work that you will need to do um, to kind of continue building out that application. 
This is one area where I really, really want to call your attention to looking at the buttons that you are clicking on. As you're working on the awards, this is a process that's not going to happen in kind of one sitting. Um, so make sure that you are saving the application to finish later. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have talked to someone who they were in, in the progress of completing the outstanding chapter award, which is really detailed and takes a lot of time. And they didn't save and their browser restarted and now everything is gone. So make sure that you're saving along the way so that the information is there. Um, once you return, you will see that in that section that says in progress applications. Um, so please make sure that you're looking at the different sections on the chapter awards page of the hub to find the ones that you've already started. One of the things that I really, really want to make sure we're, we're paying attention to is that there are two different buttons here. There's save and finish later and submit. Save and finish later, save and submit. Please be very careful about what you are doing when you go to click on one of these buttons. You will not be able to reopen the application and continue work on it once you have hit submit. So just some of the things to be aware of here. These are due no later than 11.59 PM local time on June 1st. So I know we're kind of partway into April here. That feels like a long time from now, but it's really not. That date is gonna come up really fast and the amount of time that it's going to take your chapter to really build out these applications in a way that's meaningful, that reflects all the great work you've done as a chapter, it's gonna take time and you're trying to fit that in around finals and all these other things going on. So make sure that you are starting early and giving yourselves the time that you need to do that in a way that you feel is going to really reflect the, the things that you've done. When you submit, <clears throat> please be aware that your submission will have Eastern noted in the timestamp staff and the, and the various committees. They do make sure that it's based on local time. So if you're, for example, in Hawaii and yours is submitted at one o'clock in the morning Eastern time, we're aware that's not your real time zone. Best practice is to submit at least a day beforehand to avoid any potential technical issues. Those of us that have been through this before are aware that that scramble to get things submitted before the deadline, things can be pretty crazy. Technology, I know, seems to hate me. And every time I'm up against a deadline, it seems that I've got a forced restart on my computer. Nothing decides that it wants to work. My Wi-Fi goes down. You know, all of these things that can put a real um, sense of pressure and potentially make it so that you're not going to make the deadline. And it's not something where we're going to accept late applications. This is another reason to submit early. A lot of times, you know, we will come to look at our emails on June 2nd and we're fielding a whole bunch of emails from students and, and some alumni, but mostly students who have emailed saying, oh, we, we missed the deadline because, you know, we, we lost our application because my Wi-Fi went down and I couldn't submit. You've had this time and late applications are not going to be accepted. And I can't say this one enough times, once it's submitted, it's in. Applications cannot be unsubmitted. And we've had a lot of people ask about this in the past. We'll get emails, even if it's before the deadline, and say, oh, we accidentally hit save and submit. Can we, can we get it back? No. So please pay attention to those buttons at the top. Save and finish later. Save and submit. And then again, those qualifications are verified. So if you haven't met one yet, but you're pretty confident that you will, submit your application. Um, some of those are gonna automatically update, but we do double check. So just a reminder of how the awards are selected. Um, once they are submitted, we go through awards um, review timeframes with various levels of committees. So they'll start at the regional awards committees. 
Um, once the regions have each selected their winner, the provincial awards committees will review that pool of regional winners. And then when they're completed, the national committee will review um, the five provincial winners for, for each category. Winners are announced and recognized during the fall term. And then lastly here, we've kind of talked through most of these, but just to kind of recenter us on some of the tips for submitting these applications. Um, one thing that I have found some chapters to be really successful with is to have like an app gathering. So instead of kind of dumping us all on your VPSA and saying, good luck with that, we hope we win, thanks, and kind of, you know, walking off into the night to leave them with you know, many, many hours of applications. Have a gathering together where you get together, maybe you order some pizza and you work through the applications together as a group. Um, I know sometimes I can sit down in front of uh, something like this where I need to fill in information about things that happened a long time ago, or I'm trying to you know, be compelling in what I'm saying. And, you know, when I'm by myself, I kind of have blank page syndrome, even though there's stuff there to get me started where the words just aren't coming or I can't find that one word I'm looking for. And having those people with you that you can kind of bounce ideas off of and, you know, what was that word? And, you know, you can help get some of that information um, together. And it's just frankly more fun to do it that way. Um, start early. Again, start early. That deadline's going to come up fast. And lastly, tell a story. If you think about when someone is on the reviewing end of this and they're reading the application, what's really going to catch someone's attention and pull them in and really make them understand why you deserve to, to win this award for the work your chapter did? Kind of just a laundry list of we did this event and this event and this event and everything was great. Or the story of what it meant for your chapter and why this was important to you and the impact that it had and, and, and those types of things. So while a lot of chapters I have seen historically as we've gone through these reviews will open the app, they'll say, yep, it's all populated, hit submit and move on. Um, and then they wonder why they haven't won any awards. Um, and really that storytelling, bringing it all together, making it feel cohesive and really saying that this is why our chapter deserves to win um, can really make a big difference. One of the things that we do see um, it's just making sure that there is kind of a overarching person, your VPSA. So even if you are sitting there and you have this chapter app gathering, you've got a group of, you know, maybe it's five or six people, for example, going through and doing this, make sure that the VPSA is the one that is clicking submit. So, you know, tell everybody else you're only allowed to hit save and finish later so they can do that kind of final review, make sure everything's in line and hit submit. Um, everybody can work on them, but a lot of times we found it helpful for chapters to really just have it in the VPSA's hands to actually be the one to hit submit. So they can just double check second set of eyes, make sure everything looks um, kind of tied, to, tied up together right before um, it's finalized. These are due June 1st, month and a half away. Again, it'll come fast. If you have any questions throughout this process, so you're on this call tonight, you're watching the recording, everything sounds great, and then you get in there and start doing it and you have questions, please reach out at that point. Don't wait till the last minute. Um, and please reach out using the awards at dsp.org address. Not that I'm not happy to get all of your emails and questions, I certainly am, but if you email awards chair at dsp.org, it's just kind of me that sees it. If you email awards at dsp.org, this does include others on there, so we can kind of take a who gets to it first type approach and make sure that the right people are answering the questions as well. Don't wait till the last minute, I'll say it again. Um, with that, that's the content that I really wanted to get through this evening. I hope it's been helpful, but I'll pause there for any questions or if there's anything that anyone wants to share. All right, well, I guess that I will call it there. Certainly, if you have questions later, I know I'm the type of person where, you know, two hours after I leave a call, oh, that's what I meant to ask. 
Um, so reach out, awards at dsp.org. Um, but thank you for joining this evening, um, and I hope this was helpful for you. <laughs>